Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and we got a really neat show for y'all today. We're at Ascension Living and Outdoors in Gonzales on Highway 44. And not everybody knows about the place. They sell all kinds of baits. They sell uh, live baits. They have all the lures you need for brim, bass, saltwater, saccalate, catfish, everything. So we're going to talk about today what all they sell and how to use it. So uh, y'all stay tuned. Maybe we'll learn something today. And Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. now. When? Now. When? Now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, and mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Like the dead long ago So join the fun, live off the land Cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline Waiting for the sun to shine Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens That's how we live, and it sure feels fine All right, y'all made it up front to the owners of Ascension Living and Outdoors. It's Daniel and Vera DePlessis, and they have a really nice place here. And uh, y'all been here, what, two years now, I believe? Yep, two years. Now, it started off small. You, you started with just a few things, from what I'm understanding. It was just a handful of items, stuff that we fished with. We couldn't find around the area anymore, and we started selling them to ourselves and to some friends and then it just kind of took off from there as people needed a product they couldn't find anywhere we ordered it for them stocked it and they knew we had it and that's what i'm hearing from other people as i'm in here too you know i heard a guy say today he said man this is all the stuff i usually got to go find on the internet you know so y'all doing all the hard work from people and bringing it in and and you got some really good products in here i'm telling you stuff that uh that you can't find anywhere now now what y'all brought in recently is the live bait now now tell me what you're selling the live bait Yep, we got shiners, worms, and crickets was requested. It was the last thing we added. Um, so far, it's doing really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you keep you keep them all the time. So you 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 open every day, but but Sunday. Not open on Sunday. Yeah. Got to rest one day. Yeah, got to rest one day. Uh, right now we're keeping them year round, and we'll see where it goes from there. Gotcha. All right, y'all. It's, it's the place to come get your tackle. And when we we fixing to start check out some of the really neat things that are here and get some ideas and show you some fishing tricks. All right, y'all. We done made it downstairs. I got Goosey Guys with me. How's it How going, you doing, Goose? Man? I'm doing great. Doing good. Now, Goosey's been fishing since he could walk. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Love it. Started out basically fishing ponds and stuff for brim and stuff. That was the way we did it back in the day. You know, what I'm talking about. I'm blessed. What you want to talk about today a little bit about brim fishing and yeah. all. Brim fishing has really came back fantastic. I know in Blonde River area this year, uh, I done real well on brim and and basically they have all the stuff here that you yeah. need to fish brim. I I tell you the truth, when I went, I was using carp, yeah. split shot sinker, and and the small. Uh, long shank brim hooks. You like you know? the long shank? Sure. Well, it, 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 you know, especially it's, it's easier to get it out the mouth and yeah. the hook sticking out to get yeah. it. Yeah. And now um, is this? I know he offers uh, six, ten, maybe twelve different kinds of corks up there. Well, I yeah. And I, I guess that's your choice. You know, I, I was using the same stuff I used for cyclay fishing. Uh, you know, just some smaller corks that they use for jig fishing cyclay. But I tell you what, be honest with you, I probably caught. Now this year I didn't fool with that yeah. much, but. On this beetle spin right here, that black and yellow beetle spin right there. In, in my life, in Lake Barrett, Spillway, uh, Blind River area, probably called, if you want to fish artificial. Keep one of them in your tackle that box. That is very, very, very good bait. And, and some of the other sensors you need, you know, is always bring some pliers with you. A short shank or long shank can get hung down in there, you know, so you want to be able to keep fishing while they're biting. Right. Well, they, yeah, they don't have a big mouth on them, so, I mean, it, you got to have something down to get down in there with. And, and they and they sell everything you need for brim, y'all. They, they uh, Your cricket bucket to come get their crickets, and they're selling the worms and the crickets sure. now. Uh, you can... A lot of folks just set up a little tackle box just for their brim stuff. That's the way you really need to do it instead of fooling with a big box with all kind of bass baits in it yeah. and everything else. Yeah, that that is the correct way to do it. And it don't take much. It's, it's probably the most simple. Uh, that and catfishing is probably the most simple means of fishing there is. It's, uh, 
like I say, it's a stable of fishing. That's what you usually catch. You and I was at the kids' fishing rodeo yesterday. Yeah. And what were they catching? A little brim. A little you know, bitty brim using the little, littlest of hooks. Yep. And something else I want to mention that they do have is the fly, fly baits. Sure. They have a nice selection of uh, the different spiders and the brim killer that everybody uses. Yeah, and, and uh, look, that kind of went by the wayside. At one time, that was the way to fish brim in our area. As I was growing up, uh, it, that was very, very popular. But fly fishing kind of... Kind of fell by the wayside, and I don't really understand why. I guess things come in pads and all, but that was the way to, to catch yeah. them. Uh, yeah. I caught many of them in Chinkapin Canal and uh, yeah. in that area down fly baits. Well, there it is, y'all. That's uh, Come by, get all your brim stuff. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't, but uh, you can always take a kid brim fishing. The new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Here it comes again, the Ascension Chapter of CCA's annual fundraiser banquet, which is the largest in the state. Thursday, September 19th at the Lamar Dixon Expo Center. Doors open at 5.30, and it's sure to be a fun night celebrating conservation, great food, new live auction items, and more raffles than we can list. The banquet is a great place to network, entertain clients, reward employees, or just have fun with your family or your fishing buddies. Tickets and tables still available. Together, we can make a difference. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center, an authorized Hustler, Bobcat, and Toro lawnmower dealer. Specializing in service, support, and satisfaction. Come see the wide selection of new mowers, ports, string trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and much more. Our home center features hardware, feed, outdoor cooking supplies, hunting gear, and everything for the do-it-yourself homeowner. Come take a short country drive to the hidden jewel of Livingston and experience real professional knowledge and health. Livingston Mower Supply and Home Center. All right, y'all, me and Goosey's here talking about catfishing now, and, and that's what I started on as a kid. I'd, I'd say brim, but catfish was my true love. Well, it's running trot lines and stuff is the way we used to do it back in the day. I mean, most basically that and tight line and for yeah. catfish. And, and they, they sell all the things you need for trot line, sure. y'all. For, for the main line, they got the heavy string, and then to make your leaders up, They've got the smaller string and uh, swivels, there, yeah. swivels, hooks, yep, hooks, everything you need right there. And, so. and trout lining's a, it's, it's, there's people that's, it's a dying art. Oh yeah, it it's, is. It's, it kind of is, yeah. There's still people that do it, you know, but but it's something that uh, <clears throat> if you want to catch a bunch of fish, right? You know? Well, you know, now nowadays there's, there's been for whatever reason in the last, of course, there always was some catfish being, but Lake Barrett, Lake Desalman, Lake Pelourd. Those areas like that here lately, this is what most people have been catching catfish on. Fishing those tree lines that with simple. regular brim hooks. It don't have to be no great big hook. A split shot and, and cork using worms. Or, or you can get river shrimp down there around Doron that works real good there. Right. They get them out to chop a lot down there. But be honest with you, I, I have been catching all the catfish I want off the bank in Lake Pelourd at Lake End Park. Oh, wow. Fishing those rocks between mid-April to mid-June. Now, what's your you favorite can, bait? My favorite bait over there is, is worms, regular, regular frozen. I mean, uh, the ice worms, you know, the cold worms. Cool cats. Yeah. But, but, and, and I go there and 15, 20 catfish an hour and a half is, is not out the question at all. Uh, they're spawning in those rocks at that time, and you can really tear them up. So it ain't got to be that difficult. It's a good place to fish right there. Yeah. In particular, w with, if you don't have a boat or anything. Off the bank. Fishing off the off bank. The bank. Exactly. And, and, and that's what this would come in. You, you, uh, if you're fishing more than one rod, you know they sell oh, yeah. these also. You poke it in the ground, stick your rod in there. If you're not paying attention to it, put the bell on it, you know. 
You always want some pliers. They sell those too. Have you fish yo-yos before, well, Goose? No, I never have, but I've seen several fish hanging from them before. Yeah, that's something you want to really pay attention to whenever you put them out. Sure. They will reel the fish all the way up. And then you always, you're always going to use cut bait for catfish. Always keep your knife in there. Using cut bait, you're going to need a towel for your bait. You know, your fish skinning pliers is essential for catfish. Now, this is fancy. I, I've oh, seen yeah. these years ago. Oh, That's yeah, we the, use them uh, deep uh, salt water fishing. Flip, yeah. flip your fish sure. right off. You know, going back to cat, you know, and if you're fishing in a river where you got a strong current and, and you need to anchor it down, uh, your line down or something, you, you lose these type of weights right, like right here, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. And see, they got a variety, too. Some swivel right. and some don't. And I see people that fish out in the lake with that, you know, just throw it on the bottom out there, but it's really not necessary. Uh, Catfish, in the, catfish is the most popular fish there is. There's more catfish ate than any other I fish. I would think so. No I would doubt. Think so. And here lately, people have been, I, I tell you what, in a two-week run during, during the spring of the year right now, you catch all the catfish you want in Lake Barrett area for sure. Yeah. So come by, Ascension Living and Outdoors. They have everything you need for catfishing. They got right there, a towel to keep you clean. Look, this is down dirty fishing when you start pooping them catfish oh, yeah. right there. You don't want to go it in ain't fancy bass boat. Yeah, yeah, no, it ain't for <laughs> uh, There's a lot of them caught in bass boats, but... Uh, you need to be prepared for that. So come by and get you some goods. We're going to start talking about bass now, and i got with me Mr. Roderick Saylor. How's How it you, going? How you doing? Thanks for having me. Doing good. You've been bass fishing a while. Oh, for a long time. I love it. Awesome. Now, you've got some of the things. They sell all these here. Yes, they do. And, and this is your, your go-to baits. Pretty much, yeah. Tell us a little bit about them. Okay, well, first we're going to start with a whopper plopper. Okay, a lot of people fish whopper plopper here in Louisiana. I mean, it's become a big deal. Uh... Some of the problems you get with a whopper plopper is your, your line. You reel it in, mm -hmm. you see it, the whole thing will be turning. Uh, what that do to a line is it twists it up. Ah. So what I come, with, uh, come up with and figured out is number four, number four, uh, a ring, uh -huh. and a barrel swivel. Oh, you put that on the front of it? You put, you put the, the ring on the front of uh, okay. the nose of uh, the bait, put the barrel swivel to it, so when your line coming in, your whopper plopper decides it wants to start turning. Wow. It don't twist up your line. Wow, now that's a good that's save, right that's save your line. What you got here? Okay, what I have here is a uh, Smithwick Rogues. I love for uh, fishing rogue in the springtime. I fish it all year long. I mean, I love them. Uh, thing I find with this is the hooks. The hooks are real soft. Oh. I like to fish this on a 7-2 ride built by Olive Branch Ride uh -huh. at David. 30-pound uh, test. Number three or uh, four or three odds, Gamogatsu hooks. Uh, reason why I fish it on braid is when I get caught up in the tree, and if I know the fish is there, instead of going and get it and messing up the water with my trolling motor, give it a tug. So you taking these off and putting these on? Yes, sir. They are stronger hooks. Wow, another good tip. That's, that's right. Now what we got here? Crankbait. I love to fish a crankbait too. Uh, the hooks that come on the KVD crankbaits, they're pretty stout, so I, I really don't feel no need to have to change these yeah. hooks here at all. Uh, I like to fish that on the stop and go retrieve. Sometimes a steady retreat. Uh, it, it, it'll work either way. Uh, Depending on how the fish are Yeah, you will find out what the fish want, you catch the fish. Another thing I like to do with these, with this, uh, some of these baits too is uh, a lot of people fish bass. You fish shallow, you can't catch the fish. Well, what I learned is you fish in shallow and you can't catch the fish, a bass. They probably. It's time to back off. So if you're throwing plastic baits or spinner baits, yeah, if you still like to fish the bank, okay, throw it to the bank, but drag it all the way back to the boat. Awesome. Yeah, that, that worked. And uh, also, I have here, since, since we're fishing with these treble hooks, yeah. crankbait, rogue, uh, it really don't matter. I like to use a sinker. So you're going to bring it down? I'm going to take this, and I'm going to hook this on the, on, the, uh, on the swivel. Put it on my line, and I'm going to shoot it on there to my bait. When it get there, I'm going to shake it, and usually come apart. Wow. Come on back to the boat. Wow, there it is, another good tip. Hey, bro, yeah. thanks for coming today and talking. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Okay. All right, y'all, we're moving into the bass now, and uh, I got Mason Nickens here with me this morning. How's it going? How's it going? Doing good, doing good. Now, uh, these are some of the baits that are productive for you. Can you tell us a little bit about them? Well, uh, it's July right now, and when you talk about summertime bass fishing, uh, plastics come to mind, and worms for sure. Uh, if you ask me if they will if there was one worm that you could bring on your boat all year long, it would be this Zoom Magnum Finesse Worm. And that's because of all the different applications you can use it for. Uh, you can see here what I got on the table. Uh, just quickly to show you all the well, different ways the you can rig it up. Here, here's a, ra a wacky rig. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to knock the Senko, but uh, 
I think this is better than the Cinco any day. Uh, this is your traditional finesse worm here. The magnum finesse is two times as thicker, and I believe it's a quarter of an inch longer. And this bulbous tail end right here, uh -huh. it really gives it a lot of action. Oh, wow. And uh, You got them hooked different over here. You see, the density of these baits and how thick that they are, some of these uh, screw lock heads, like the shaky head here, mm -hmm. it, uh, it really allows you to bite down into your worm. It lasts a lot longer. And uh, my favorite way to fish this is weightless. Um, so the worm's more authentic. Looking. Very buoyant, has a lot of action to it. And uh, because of how dense this thing is, usually when you would fish a weightless rig, you step up to a, a heavier duty hook, like a four aught or something like that. Uh, I like to use the VMC heavy duty, but uh, if you're a lazy fisherman and uh, you got you know 12, 14 pound test on, and you're not ready to you know drop down an eight or 10 pound test so you can really sling these little baits a long way, you know this thick worm that's very buoyant, you can keep the same setup and you can still cast just as far. Let me ask you something hot. If you caught one bass or two bass, you need to change your worm after that. I believe I can catch four or five on these baits before I have to get another one. Before they wear it out. Mm. All right, bro. Well, thanks for stopping it. We're going to see how they look in the aquarium and see how they Let's see the action. Man, where'd you get those Mr. Baits from? Hey, at the New Hunting Fishing Store. New Hunting and Fishing Store? New Hunting and Fishing Store? New Hunting and Fishing Store? Yeah, on Highway 44 in Gonzales. It's Ascension Living and Outdoors. They carry a full line of fresh and saltwater baits and tackle, including Matrix, Voodoo shrimp, missile, zoom, and local baits like Delta Lures and Humding. And the hunting section is loaded with calls, scents, knives, attractants, and much more. They even carry deer candy and Nate's buck bait. Oh yeah, ladies, there's even a gift shop. Whiskey River, take my mind. All right, y'all, while we're in here talking to all the fishermen, Bear got here early this morning and started doing some cooking. And uh, tell us what you got today. Oh, we got a little sauce pecan going here on here. I got here early, cooked it all up, and got it ready to go for them when they come by to eat. You said you got deer meat, deer ground meat, and deer sausage. sausage. That's deer, 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 deer. Deer, deer. And there's so many ingredients in this, we don't have enough time on the show to tell you what all's in here. No, it took about 30 minutes to get through the store to pick up everything. <laughs> two, 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 two bags of... So, two carts of group? Yeah, we had three buggies trying to shop for one thing. But I'm going to tell you what, y'all, all the fishermen come in, and that's what they're looking for, something good to eat. And here we are toward, the, I would say, the end of the summer, and everybody's breaking out deer meat, so it's time to cook all that yeah, now. you got to so. get your freezer opened up. So we're going to taste, taste some of this in a little while, so y'all hang on. Pleasure of having some wildlife and fishery here, Lieutenant Will Roberts. How's it going? Good. How are you, man? Doing good, doing good. And a little bit today we're going to talk about, what I, what I want to talk about, a little bit of Boating safety, but I want to talk about uh, licenses. When do you need a license? Uh, once you turn the age of 16, you need a, a license to fish in state waters. Okay, and that's if you're off the bank, in the boat, anywhere? Anywhere in public state waters. Okay, yep. okay. Now let's talk a little bit about, you know, we talked about the brim and the sackalay, and uh, let's tell the people what they can catch, you know. How many, how many sackalay can you keep? You can keep 50 uh, in state waters, and then you, you jump to catfish, you can keep 100. 100? 100. Hundred, yep, and then out of those species of catfish, you can there there are some minimum size limits, but you can have a twenty five undersized in, okay. in that hundred, and then as far as um, largemouth bass, it's yeah. ten. Ten, so you can all have ten of them. Yep. So that's why they call them. Yeah, <laughs> keep right. the biggest ten. Yeah, you can keep, keep ten, and then that that's that's talking generally across the state. Now, if you go to certain areas, Toledo Bend, False River. There's some additional size limits that you might need to check before you go. It's yeah. always a good idea before you go to an area you're going to fish is to know what the limits are yeah. so you don't get in trouble. Yeah, you can say the lady <laughs> at Walmart told me I right. could do this, and that's not going to work. Yeah, you still get a ticket. Work. Right. And yeah. we want to mention they sell the hunting and fishing license here, so right. you can get them here, and I'm sure they have the books too, and if they're not... I'm, I'm sure they have those regulations. Is that, and that's pretty much what you go by the book. Huh? The, yeah, the, we, we, I mean, we go by the law, but... Typically, there could be a misprint in the book, and, and gotcha. generally, we would work and, and put that out if there was, because right. um, we, we try to get that information out to the public, because we want them to go out, have a good time, and, and not have to deal with us on a, on a negative side. And something that you probably never, do you get to go fishing? I do. Uh, yeah. Not when I work, but right. uh, we enjoy all aspects of, 
outdoors. But what's your favorite fishing? Um, probably bass fishing. You know, gotcha. if they if they're biting, I'll, I enjoy that. Gotcha. Hey, thanks for coming. Yep, thanks for having us. Thank you. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages three and eighteen with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOFLA.com Mark your calendars, break out the camo, and start blowing your duck calls. It's time for the Ascension Chapter of Ducks Unlimited Banquet, Thursday, September 26th. Doors open at 5.30 at the Gonzales Civic Center. Sponsor tables and tickets are still available. Bring the family, get together with the guys, or have some after-hours office fun with great food, auctions, raffle prizes, and gun of the year. It's sure to be a fun night. All proceeds will go to preserving our wetlands for generations to come. See you there. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp, tailgating, or planning dinner. We make our own cracklings, beef jerky, whole cheese, and sausage right here in the store. We also process deer and hogs. Junior's Meat Market has an abundance of groceries and frozen items which include crab cakes, fried oysters, tilapia, and more. We have daily meat specials, and we cook plate lunches every other weekend. Stop by Junior's Meat Market today and bring home dinner. All right, y'all, got another bass fisherman here, and y'all going to recognize him, Mr. Lyle Johnson. Hey, man, what's going on, Rod? How's it going? It's great, man. It's great. Glad talk about a good subject here. Yes, everybody wants to talk about fishing. That's right. Well, this is something that they sell here, and... Tell me a little bit about these. Uh, I see some resemblance between all of them, but tell, them, tell us what we got here. Well, a little over 10 years ago, Strike King introduced their series of rage tail baits. And uh, really, if you look at it, how big these uh, paws are on this crawfish right here. Like Back then, these were really, really outrageous. And that's where they got the name rage tail. Okay. Because all the tails are very big. They produce a lot of vibration in the water. And that's what made this a little bit different than a lot of other baits. Now, uh, uh, you can get them uh, other manufacturers, but my favorite has always been this Rage Tail Craw. Okay. Uh, I, I fished them all, just about every one of them, and they're all very effective. But uh, the first time I ever put one of these on, and I got a chance to see the vibration and the wiggle of these tails right here, not only did it hook me, but it began to hook a lot of bass as well. Gotcha. And it became... Gotcha. Pretty still my favorite bait to fish as far as plastics go. Do you have a favorite color? Uh, this is a, a watermelon red, which is probably my all-time favorite. Uh, I fish a lot of different colors, but uh, and, and what I really like to do with it is uh, take some spike it, chartreuse, garlic, dye, and dip these crawfish paws in there, and that's how I like to fish. Of course, uh, the, the bait is very versatile, and that's what I really want to talk about. Of course, the way it was designed to fish was a Texas rig with a sinker you know, pitching and flipping, which is very effective. But by accident, uh, I found two other ways to fish it really good. Uh -huh. uh, reeling the bait in one day after a cast, I had a bass hit it, which is not terribly unusual for a plastic bait, but I began to develop that as well. And so you can take it and fish it, even with your Texas rig, or you can get a hook design with a little sinker built on it and fish this like a swim bait or a spinner bait, whatever gotcha, you want to call gotcha. it, at different baits. And I guess a little more action. It's very effective. And then my favorite way to fish it a lot of times, which I discovered by accident as well, I saw a fish hit on top water, and so I threw my bait and just reeled it fast enough to get it on top, and the vibration this thing makes on top, oh, flap it. they can't resist it. And so now, and it's heavy enough to fish it without a sinker. So I fish it on top water as well. All right. So a rage tail crawl is a very versatile bait that you can fish plenty of different ways and catch a lot of fish, and I've been successful with it. Well, we're going to take one and put it in an aquarium and see how it looks. And I want to thank you for coming today, Mr. Lowe. All right, man. My pleasure. Thank All you, right, y'all. Me and Goosey's moving on over to the Sackalay fishing now, and we want to tell you a few things about the Sackalay. And something he brought up, something he really likes is the 
Well, the way I fish, exactly, and mostly I fish them in the spring nowadays. But I tell you what, uh, uh, years ago, uh, a friend of mine up in Old River, Morganza, uh, uh, turned me on to this. Actually, it's a fly rod, an uh, eight foot, uh, eight and a half foot fly rod with a open face spinning reel on it. And, and the reason for that, those cyclists would get up under the shade under those piers and stuff, right? And and and, and you could stick this type of rod and reel up under there, bail it out, and let the line go down. You're fishing deep water right there. So anyway. So the you object was, the pier. You, oh, you way up under there. You as far as you can stick that rod up in in that shade, and that's where they that's where they congregate too. That's what fish do in the summer. Just about all fish is gonna look for shade. Just like me and you, if you go looking cows right now, they're under a shade tree right now. Exactly. Oh yeah. But anyway, with this type of reel, when you get one on, you you can reel it up under there because there's no other way hardly to reach up under there in that depth of water. Now I use it. I use this setup with a cork and 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 a split shot and. A, and a, a, a regular hook, a regular gold cycle a hook like we got right here. So shiners? Shiners, and, and I use jigs most of the time. I'll be honest with you, you know, when I go when the cycle is biting, I go in the spring when they're right. up close, and, and, and you can really tear them up like that. But I, and I basically use So you can use it for jigging like. or live bait. I use it for whatever. I use it if I want to brim gotcha. fish with I use the gotcha. same, same rod and reel setup. Now, like I say, this with a 132nd jig head in the area where we fish at, you know, I'm talking about the Amit Red Blonde River or uh, Lake Barrett area. You know, and, and he's got all the different size weights too. So if, oh, he's got all the jigs, if you're yeah. in deeper water and, and you need to get to the bottom quicker, you would put a bigger one on. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, it'd be, yeah, if I was fishing up an old river, I'd have a different setup. Now, don't get me wrong, 16 foot of water. But uh, I tell you what he also has here, he has uh, the uh, crappie ammo. I never crop, use those. Well, that's from the crappie psychic. Uh, he's got tails. He's got different tails. He's got those little little uh, balls like that you put on there. They sent it, and they seem to work real well. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. He, I, I'm more of a traditional shiner guy. Well, that's you know? I, I like that, too. Uh, I'm more, and he sells all these things too. You know, you can get the the bait bucket, right. the air bubble, and then uh, the oxygen tablets. You know, you buy them the night before. You know, they're not open that early in the morning. I think they open at eight in the morning. So, people who leave early buy the shiners the night before. Now, corks is a variation too. On a lot of people are picky about right. their cork. Yeah, on, oh, sure. And they got those sliding corks, right. where you can you can reel it all the way up to the end. Yeah. That, that, and then when you let it out, you, your line can drop with yeah, 15, that, that, 20 feet under the water. No, no, no doubt. That that's a a, a, a big success some, story right there. High story. technology stuff yeah, right sure there. Is. And and they got the jig heads, y'all to weight it. And some people like the colored eyes. Some people like a white eye. Some people, and the niblets. You was telling me you mess with yeah, these oh, too. Yeah, oh yeah, they they work very well, very well. And yeah, they, uh, uh, Gulp's been putting out some neat stuff now too. They uh, all right. the, looks like a minnow and yeah. stuff. So <laughs> everything you need for sacale. If you're catching too many of them, look, you even got the counter too. You just load them up, load them up in there. Sacale fish has become real popular. And the sacale, you know, the, the, the rivers around here are teeming with sacale right now. We don't get no hurricanes. I guarantee you, next spring you you can and you can go catch them right now in the Amen River, but you have to fish them a little deeper in that area in Blonde River. I had a friend of mine the other day called Thirty Something. He told his wife, "That's that's enough. We got enough. We don't yeah. need to, you know, yeah. he left them biting." And this is summertime. I'm talking about a couple of weeks ago. So it, it, it's really on right now. And uh, you know, people used to not think that really they had that many sackle there, but they're always were there. Yeah, I used to yeah. see them in hook nets yeah. and all back years ago. But nobody really knew how to fish them, and we didn't really fish them that it, way. It's you know? it's another art. It's like the bass fishermen. There's yeah. some true sackle fishermen. So there it is, y'all. Come by and get all your sackle gear. All right, y'all. We uh we've been talking about freshwater, and all we've been talking about is freshwater. So you're gonna have to tune in next week to see all the saltwater stuff. We got some guys lined up and the sauce pecans coming up too. So I want to thank everybody for watching Cajun Living and Cooking and we'll see you next week.